human eye had never beheld such a spectacle before. Unleashed in a bid to halt a war, all observers were greeted with an intense light, succeeded by absolute darkness and destruction. It was August 6, 1945, when the world saw the birth of the most potent weapon ever crafted by human hands. The shockwave stemming from the explosion turned everything within a one mile radius into ruins. This catastrophic event, inflicted upon the industrial city of Hiroshima, Japan, claimed the lives of 140,000 people. Yet, just seven years later, the relentless march of progress in the field of weaponry birthed an even more ominous force, the thermonuclear weapon, commonly known as the hydrogen bomb. To grasp the magnitude of its power, envision the original Hiroshima atomic bomb unleashed upon New York City. It would obliterate everything within a one mile radius. Meanwhile, the hydrogen bomb, a weapon capable of unimaginable destruction, could turn everything within a 10 mile radius into rubble. Today, the world possesses over 10,000 such bombs, each with the capacity to annihilate countless lives multiple times over. But what makes these weapons so formidable? How do they operate? What sets the hydrogen bomb and atomic bomb apart? Stay tuned and watch this video to find the answer. What exactly defines a bomb? Perhaps this question sounds a bit cliche. However, before we dive into the fascinating comparison between the hydrogen and atomic bombs, let's rewind and take a quick peek into the captivating history of these explosive devices. The word bomb has its roots in the Latin term bombus, referring to something that generates a loud sound. The initial explosive devices encasing explosives in a robust metal shell are believed to have been created by the Chinese in the 13th century. Yet, the most notorious use of potent explosives occurred in World War II, when Germany and Britain conducted extensive aerial bombing campaigns. Now, hydrogen versus atomic, how do they work? The huge power of every nuclear weapon comes from converting a small amount of mass into a large amount of energy, as described by Einstein's equation, E equals mc squared. But the atomic and hydrogen bombs employ distinct methods to achieve this. The foundation of the process lies in nuclear fission, discovered in 1938. Atomic bombs, such as those dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki, operate by tearing atoms apart in a process called fission. It is like a massive breakup where a large atom splits into two smaller ones, sparking a chain reaction that leads to a colossal explosion. However, hydrogen bombs skip the breakup narrative and delve into cosmic chemistry. Instead of splitting atoms, they bring atoms together through a dazzling process called nuclear fusion. This fusion spectacle, the same process that fuels the sun, is the secret behind why hydrogen bombs are thousands of times mightier than their atomic counterparts. The atomic bomb dropped on Hiroshima released energy equivalent to 15,000 tons of TNT while the first hydrogen bomb surpassed this with an energy release equivalent to 10 million tons of TNT. During World War II, scientists recognized the potential of nuclear fission for weaponry. Amid concerns about Germany developing a bomb, Oppenheimer led the top secret Manhattan Project in Los Alamos, completing its mission in about three years. The project involved over 130,000 people and cost $2.2 billion, equivalent to $38 billion in 2023 dollars. To address uncertainties, scientists designed two types of atomic bombs, 
one with uranium and the other with plutonium. The Trinity test, the first detonation, used 13 pounds of plutonium, producing a blast equivalent to 20,000 tons of TNT. The bomb dropped on Hiroshima contained 140 pounds of uranium, resulting in a blast equivalent to 15,000 tons of TNT. Creating an atomic bomb involves obtaining weapons-grade uranium, a challenging task. To initiate a chain reaction, scientists must achieve a supercritical mass, a state allowing the atoms to sustain the reaction. While uranium was mined and enriched, plutonium had to be synthesized from basic materials. The difficulty in obtaining raw materials and the complexity of the process limit the number of countries possessing atomic bombs. Only a handful of countries, including the United States, Russia, the United Kingdom, China, France, India, Pakistan, Israel, and North Korea, have this capacity. To create a hydrogen bomb, one must first master the atomic bomb. The process involves combining uranium or plutonium with isotopes of hydrogen, deuterium, and tritium. Hydrogen bombs use nuclear fusion, where atoms are joined together at extremely high temperatures, earning the name thermonuclear bomb. Although trickier to make, hydrogen bombs are lighter and can travel more easily on missiles. While hydrogen bombs haven't been used in war, both the United States and Russia tested them in the 1950s. Other nations like Britain, Russia, China, and France are believed to have conducted hydrogen bomb tests, with North Korea announced to have already successfully detonated one in 2017. According to the U.S. Department of Energy, the United States conducted its inaugural test of a full-scale thermonuclear device in November 1952, causing an explosion with a force equivalent to over 10 million tons of TNT, approximately 700 times more potent than the atomic bomb dropped on Hiroshima. Following this, in August 1953, the Soviet Union tested its inaugural boosted fission weapon, utilizing thermonuclear burning to augment its explosive yield. And in November 1955, the Soviet Union conducted its first genuine thermonuclear weapon trial. Currently, there are approximately 12,500 nuclear warheads worldwide, mainly hydrogen bombs, with the United States and Russia possessing 89% of this arsenal. There was practically no limit to the scale of explosions that either superpower could produce. While fission bombs were restricted in size by the amount of fissile material that could be assembled without reaching a critical mass, fusion bombs faced no such constraints. It is entirely reasonable if the world is haunted by the alarming prospect of nuclear war. Well, that's all for today. Thanks for watching and don't forget to share your thoughts in the comment section below.